Hey guys, it's Clara Trellis925. Today I wanted to talk to you about stationery. I wanted to go over everything that has to do with stationery and what you need to have uh, for your wedding. Um, so first things first, I'm just going to go in order of items that you should have for your wedding and a little bit of details and information about each one of them. Uh, first things first is the save the date. Save the dates are typically sent about six to eight months prior to your wedding and they are especially important if you're planning on having guests that are coming from out of town. That way that they can figure out their transportation, like flights if they're having that, as well as accommodations, hotels, Airbnbs, and things like that. Um, the next thing that you guys should think about for your stationary items are the invitation suite. Inside of the invitation suite is uh, typically like the invitation card as well as the reception card and RSVP. Um, a lot of people put like an outer and inner and envelopes. Um, the outer envelope being the whole suite included, the inner envelopes being maybe a personalized first name envelope uh, being first name uh, and maybe last name on the envelope with the invitation card for the ceremony um, as well as the reception card and then another one for the RSVP uh, or response card for your guests. Um, or if you don't want an inner envelope card, that's totally fine. Our uh, inner envelope, you don't really need one. It's your preference. Uh, Typically, they are for maybe higher end uh, or more traditional style weddings. Um, and then things that you should definitely have on your invitation card is uh, the host. So who is hosting your wedding? Traditionally, this might be uh, mother and father, basically who's paying for the wedding, um, as well as who's getting married, aka you guys, um, the date, time, venue name as well as the uh, city and state that you're going to be in. So Trellis 925 Orlando, Florida should be on your invitation card. And then if you're planning on having um, a reception or maybe Trellis 925 is your reception spot and you're having a ceremony spot that uh, might be different, um, typically then you have two cards, the invitation card for your ceremony and then uh, reception card for your reception. If you're all having it all in one, you can just say followed by uh, reception <laughs> on your invitation card. Um, another traditional item that you might have in your invitation suite would be the map or directions card. Um, traditionally, obviously, they didn't have Google or any sort of online maps for your guests. So filling out in a detailed instructions of how to get to the venue was super important. Um, today, not as important. However, it is traditional. And if you're planning on doing the traditional route, it might be nice to include a map or detail or directions card. Um, something else that is pretty traditional would be an accommodations card. Most of the time nowadays you're seeing that information being on your wedding website, but if you are going for a more traditional route, you might want to include a couple of hotels that you'll be staying at uh, for your guests to choose from. Um, and that would be everything that's included in the invitation suite so the, uh, that's sent about 68 weeks prior to your wedding and that again is the invitation the recep reception card the rsvp card the map and directions as well as the hotel and accommodations card um other things that you might need for stationary purposes would be maybe uh, your ceremony program that's traditionally uh, something that people would provide, especially for longer uh, ceremonies. So maybe uh, more religious, if you're going to have mass included, uh, those type of ceremonies would be more like to have a ceremony program. If you're planning on a shorter one, it's also it's an optional thing. You don't have to have a ceremony program, um, but 
some people enjoy that and they like to give the information like the bride's name, the groom's name, the bridesmaids and groomsmen names, uh, maybe the officiant's name, if you're planning on having any readings included in that, as well as songs, scripture verses, uh, maybe a uh, little info about you guys as a couple and how you met, uh, things like that can be found on the ceremony programs. Um, other things that you might need for stationary purposes are escort cards or seating table cards. These are just tell your guests where they're planning on or where they're seated. Um, escort cards can also be uh, place cards. Um, which are really needed for plated dinner. If you are having a plated dinner, definitely make sure you plan on uh, budgeting for place cards or, or escort cards as uh, the caterer is going to need to know who ordered what uh, entree. So typically with our menus uh, that you get if you plate a meal, you get two entree options. However, if you're getting a plated meal, each guest only gets one entree, typically like a chicken or a steak, and they get to choose which one they want on their RSVP card, which I will go into more detail later about. Um, but the caterer is going to need to know who is getting what meal, is, and so that's what the place card comes for. They put it on the front of their plate, and then the caterers are able to tell who's got what. Um, other things would be maybe table number cards if you are planning on having that. Of course, in the venue, we do have a couple of table numbers. One example would be like this, a nice gold table number. Um, but you can also print yours out and put one in like a frame or uh, anything like that. Um, and it really just designates, you know, which table is what, so your guests can go find their seats pretty easily. Um, other ones would be uh, maybe a menu card. If you want to put a menu card on your place setting for your guests who are, maybe want to look over what meal options prior to the buffet or are getting served for their plated dinner. Um, and then you also got to think about maybe thank you cards after your wedding. You want to thank all your guests that showed up and especially the ones that provided you with gifts. You're going to want to thank them for everything that they've done for you guys. Um, so that's the list of everything that you might need for your stationery. You know, save the dates, invitations, reception card, map and directions, RSVP card, hotel and accommodations card, ceremony program, uh, escort cards or table seating cards, uh, table numbers, menu cards, and thank you cards. Um, one question that I get a lot of is when should you order and when should you send certain things? Um, so you should always order your stationery probably four to five months prior, um, unless you are getting uh, save the dates, which you're gonna need to be able to send within six to eight months prior to your wedding. So you might wanna think about it maybe a year in advance, surprisingly enough. Um, and then you're going to send your invitation suite uh, six to eight weeks prior to your wedding with the RSVP card. You'll want to have somewhere on their RSVP card like respond by date, um, and you'll want that response by date at least 35 days prior to your wedding. At the venue, we do require 30-day uh, final guest count guarantee. Um, so you want the response cards right before you're going to need to submit that information of who's going to be coming to your wedding. Um, I suggest 35 days prior to give you five days if you haven't received the RSVP card to um, A, let it get through the mail, and B, so you can call people and ask them what's going on. Um, some tips and tricks about your RSVP card. So first off, um, I know some of you are having an adults only reception. So on the RSVP card itself, uh, one of the things I like to do is put adults only reception um, or, you know, children over the age of 16 or so uh, only 
this kind of gives people the idea that children are not invited and on the RSVP card themselves, since they're filling out that information, is way better than having it on the invitation itself, since some people don't always read all the fine details on the invitation card. Um, other things, you know, to do for your RSVP card would be uh, have the names listed of who's invited. So instead of saying, uh, you know, I've seen like Mr. and Mrs., um, but maybe actually put only their names, David and Diana, yada, yada. Um, instead of just being, like leaving a gap in uh, for them to fill out themselves and sometimes they fill in a little bit too many people on the RSVP card. Uh, another trick would be to have like specific number of seats uh, saved. So uh, something that says, you know, we've reserved two seats for you in attendance. Please let us know if you are coming uh, and then have like two check boxes, coming or not coming in some sort of <laughs> uh, words like that. Um, another thing to have on the RCP card would be maybe some dietary restrictions for them to fill out. So uh, if they are vegetarian, glucose free, give them some place to be able to tell you what their dietary restrictions are. Since today, you know, there's a lot more dietary <laughs> restrictions than there ever used to be. Um, You'll also want to make sure that, along with the RSVP card, that you do include an envelope for them. Uh, since most people don't have envelopes or postage lying around, and you'll want to make sure you fill out the return address, so your address or whatever address you want the RSVPs to go, you'll want to put that information on there for them, since they are more likely to fill out the information, put it in a stamp, and or put in an envelope, lick it, and put it in the mail, then they are to try to like find an envelope, find a postage, find the uh, mailbox, and fill in all that information for themselves. They're not going to do it, so you need to do it for them. Um, and then another trick for your RSVP cards is on the back of your RSVP card, write a number and designate who uh, gets which number so that when you do get the RSVP card that is filled in incorrectly with maybe too many children or maybe uh, not enough information or um, things like that, that you'll be able to know exactly which RSVP card uh, or person it came from. So you can call them up and be like, hey guys, I need to talk to you about your RSVP. Um, and I think that's it. So if you have any questions or concerns, please be sure to let me know in the comments below and I'll answer you as soon as I can. Okay, bye.